What's going on guys, Culprit here, and welcome once again to my Gun Locker series where I review and analyze all the weaponry in Battlefield 4, give you my thoughts and opinions, and tell you a little bit how I like to use them, how I like to outfit them, to help you a little bit better, and maybe turn you on to trying some weapons you otherwise wouldn't. Today we're going to talk about the Ace 52 CQB, and the reason for this is because I just recently reviewed the Scar H, and a lot of you guys asked me to compare, contrast the, the two of each other, and it's probably more fair to compare the Ace 52 to the Scar H than it is the other assault rifles and carbines, because these two kind of set themselves aside compared to the other assault rifles and carbines because they're both very high damage weapons they're kind of filling the same role but they're slightly different usages within that role and I'm going to talk about that as I get into my recommended usage so first let's just get right into the pros this thing just like the Scar H has high damage for fast kills it helps it excel at longer ranges medium ranges that high damage will help it just mow people down CQB of course the 34 hot max damage this one drops down to 20 minimum damage I'm going to get that in a second so that 34 max damage up close, I believe it's 8 meters, is going to really rip through a single target very quickly where you're going to run into trouble just like the Scar H is in multiple targets CQB. Uh, the min damage is a bit lower than that of the Scar H, yet it's still higher at medium to long ranges than the assault rifles or carbines at 20. Most of the assault rifles, assault rifles and carbines come in anywhere between say like 15 and 18 uh, min damage at medium to long range, whereas the Ace 52 comes in at 20. Uh, when compared to the assault rifles, that's a little bit better damage, not going to make much of a difference as far as an extra bullet but when you do compare that to the scar h it's going to take you say at long range it's going to take you one more bullet to kill somebody than it does with the scar h this is a big determining factor with the scar h in the scar h's favor if you're playing more medium to long range go scar h if you're playing more medium to, to close range go with the ace 52 that's just a rough lesson for now i'll get more into that in a second the ace 52 has more side to side recoil than the scar h but it's about average for the assault rifles and carbines so i didn't know exactly where to put this in the pros and the cons again i'm comparing it both to the scar h which is kind of its cousin weapon and also to the assault rifle and carbines but it has slightly more vertical or uh, side to side recoil tallies up to about five where the scar h was about four uh but it's right in there competitive with all the, all the other assault rifles and carbines the magazine just like the scar h does not hold a lot than this like a lot of rounds in the magazine it has 26 rounds it is better and it is kind of considerably better than the scar h at 21 it doesn't sound like much but five rounds can actually save your butt when you're especially against multiple targets it does have better hip fire compared to the scar h which is kind of interesting the hip fire spread is considerably better obviously you have more rounds these types of things and once you're up close there's really no difference in the damage especially when comparing it to the scar h uh compared to other assault rifles it's pretty good hip fire still and of course you, you kind of have much better damage than the average assault rifle and carbines uh, flip the coin let's talk about some of the cons the magazine size starting is small obviously that's magazine size is 26 um, it, it, you get a little less starting ammo, uh, like just like the same issues you're facing with the Scar H, 130 starting ammo compared to like a 155 with the Ace, you get 5 magazines basically. Because of the small magazine, you're going to be reloading a lot. The recoil times are not great, but they're not poor either, they're kind of right down the middle. Um, the Scar H had much better reload times, but you're probably going to be reloading more often, so that's a trade-off, kind of a push right there. Because of the low magazines, you know, the starting ammo, you're going to often be reloading a lot. You're going to possibly be running into the issue of switching your weapon. So if it's not something you're strong with, you might want to stay away from the Scar H and the Ace 52 in this case. Um, at least until you get a little bit better with kit switching. Hey. The Ace 52 has pretty high vertical recoil, especially compared to the other assault rifles and carbines. Compared to the Scar H, it's just it's it's actually a little bit better than the Scar H, slightly bit better. I think it's 0.45 compared to 0.5. Um, you may or may not notice that difference depending on how your prowess with the weapon and how sensitive you are to things like recoil. We do know within game we do have ways to kind of remedy that, but we'll get to that a little bit later as well. Um, it has relatively high first shot multiplier. What does that mean? It basically makes this a little slightly less ideal for burst firing. Whereas the Scar H had very, very low first shot multiplier. And between the high damage, the, the spread, all these things, it just made the Scar H almost ideally suited for medium range, long range, defensive play. This switches it up a little bit. It doesn't really hurt it. Compared to other assault rifles and carbines, it's okay, it's fine. But again, I'm comparing this as well to the Scar H. Um, it's slightly less ideal for burst firing. You're just going to have a little bit more recoil as you're doing those burst fires with that first shot. Um, this does have more spread aimed down sights while standing still, but it's slightly less when running compared to the Scar H. Uh, again, here we go, comparing it to the Scar H, two weapons that fill very similar roles. So basically, you're going to be at a detriment standing still, stationary, think defensive, but you're going to have a little bit of an easier time when you're moving. So those, those that's a pretty big uh, differentiation between the Scar H and the Ace 52. So let's talk about what that means and how that translates into my recommended usage. 
This weapon obviously excels at medium range engagements. It does. It doesn't quite excel. It's not as ideally suited for the Scar Age, but it's still a pretty big monster. You're going to have more damage. It's pretty dar darn accurate, and it's got pretty good things that help it out as far as, you know, you can play it a little differently than a Scar Age. Let's say this. Basically, how I play it, I play more defensive with the Scar Age. I play behind cover. I play slower. I play more defensive. Stationary. I let the enemy come to me. With the Ace-52, I like to be a little bit more aggressive. I like to apply a little more pressure. Now, I'm not kicking down doors. I'm not running at people's CQB, but I'm going to move more from cover to cover. I'm going to try to get forward a little bit more because I, I have less of a uh, penalty aim down sights on my spread while I'm moving. I have a little bit better hip fire compared to the Scar Age. So I, I'm a little better suited with Ace-52 to kind of be moving, be on the move and kind of getting in closer to people which for me personally is historically my more preferred play style i'm kind of training myself differently with battlefield 4 as i've mentioned time and time again to be a more defensive stationary cover to cover guy but that is where the two differentiate for each other scar h is more stationary defensive behind cover it's a monster in that role it is an absolute monster this ace 52 is a little bit different you can be a little more mobile you can apply a little more pressure you cannot be so afraid you have a few more rounds in your magazine for hip fire your hip fires considerably better you can be a little more aggressive with the scar h and i think that's why a lot of people are kind of liking it better um, it can handle itself better and so you can be like i said it has a hard time versus multiple targets just like the scar h it's got less rounds in the magazine you're gonna have a little harder time but it is better suited than the scar h as i mentioned before it is pretty ideally suited for defensive covered positions holding off enemies much like the scar h not quite as good as the scar h but that's not saying much because the scar h is basically perfectly built for defensive stationary <laughs> engagements as i've repeated time and time again if you're a high accuracy player, this as well will be a great great weapon because those headshots are going to destroy people at medium plus ranges. You're going to be doing 68 damage with a headshot up close. People usually cannot react to that. They usually cannot kind of counter you back and they're just going to drop. Play slower. Try to force them into medium range gauges. Typically the sweet spot. Think of it this way. The Scar H is going to be medium plus engagements. The Ace-52 is going to be medium and in engagements. If that's how you want to play, both can be played pretty slowly, pretty cautiously, pretty defensively. But, again, Ace-52 is going to be medium in, Scar Age is going to be medium out. That's usually how I decide. So, let's talk about the attachments now. Optic, like always, any red dot sight uh, is going to be fine. Hollow sights are also okay. You could make an, uh, you know, a case for an ACOG, but I would go a different way. If myself, I would pretty much go with a hollow or red dot with a magnifier rather than an ACOG. It gives me more versatility. And I just, I'm not one for higher magnification, magnification sights, and I don't think many of you are either. Um, personally, my personal favorite with this is usually the HD33 hollow sight. Uh, the Coyote, everybody likes it, but that little reticle, especially from longer ranges, can be hard to pick out. The Cobra sight would probably be a good solution to that. Basically a matter of personal preference here. Barrel. This is a tough one. Um, this is personal experience. The muzzle brake compensator and ideally no attachment are pretty much up to you. As I mentioned, the Ace-52 has more, you know, side-to-side -side recoil than that of the Scar Age, so you might need a compensator, especially if you're first starting out with this weapon to use, but then you're sacrificing some of the accuracy, uh, that is a trade-off. It might be a bit of a crutch until you get better with the weapon. Same could be said about the muzzle brake. This has one of the higher vertical recoils, but vertical recoil can be compensated for. So if you're able to do that you know, with your mouse and, and controlling it, um, you might not need that as well either. Again, you might need it initially as you get used to the weapon, but try to get to the point where you don't need either, because then you're really gonna let this weapon shine how it's meant to with some pretty good accuracy at medium range, and then you're gonna be much better off. So pressure is always a good option. Stay off the minimap. It's actually probably better suited for this, because like I said, you can run and gun a bit more with the Ace-50, um, so the suppressor is actually going to be good, you know, much better hip fire and move better ADS while moving spread. So the suppressor is obviously going to be very viable with the Ace-52. I'll tell you one thing. I have been using the Flash Hider more and more, and I'm actually even enjoying it. it it's You underestimate it. It doesn't seem like it has many buffs. I mean, you're still going to appear in the minimap, but that muzzle flash, especially if you are playing behind cover and things, it's going to hide that, take that away. That is usually the biggest visual key for people to find you. You just don't realize it until you start using it. And it basically, you have no detriment to it. You know, So if you're not sure if you're going to do a muzzle break or a compensator because you don't want those debuffs you know, on your accuracy, well, slap on a Flash you're not going to have any detriment to it, and it's going to just help you. It's going to give you a little bit of an aid. Check it out. It's, it's, I think it's underappreciated right now. It's not a super attachment, but it's pretty darn good. Um, 
As far as the underbarrel, I tend to like the Ergo Vert Grip because I move around a lot more with the Ace 52. As I mentioned, it's more a little more suited for applying pressure and moving, at least from cover to cover, if not running indoors and things, with your better hip fire and things than the Scar H. Scar H, I like the stubby, I like the angled on the Scar H. Here I'm going Vert Grip and the Ergo Grip. Um, the angled is always a decent option at medium range if you're going to play more of a stationary, you know, let the people come at you in burst fire. But like I mentioned, between the burst fire, you know, the first shot recoil on the burst fire and things, uh, you're probably better suited to go Scar H if you're going to go that roll and, and slap an angle on the Scar H. Um, the accessory, it depends on how you plan to play it, obviously. If you're going to hold the position, then laser light combo is not a good choice. It's going to give away your position. Again, Flash Hider might work, you know, in that roll as well, coupled with, you know, no laser light combo, obviously. And in that case, I would go with a magnifier. If you're going to play medium range, um, you're going to be much better off. Now, if you're going to take the Ace 52 and you feel like you're going to be moving, you're going to be a little more aggressive, as I pointed to a couple times, you might want to go with that laser light combo. It's kind of up to you, depending on what map and what engagements you're playing. Now, in summary, with my gun locker review of the Ace 52, basically the Ace 52 and the Scar H are very, very similar to weapons, yet they do have certain interesting differentiations. Uh, basically, I feel like there's all the assault rifles and the carbines, and there's the Scar H, which is way out on the side. It's got the high damage. It is practically ideally suited for medium plus range engagements, playing defensively, and that's what I've been training myself to do, so I've really loved that weapon. I've enjoyed it. I feel like the Ace 52 is sort of a hybrid. It's kind of in between your standard assault rifle carbines and the Scar H. It's kind of in that gray area a little bit. It kind of has elements of the scar h it has elements of your standard assault rifles it's able to let you run and gun a little more be a little more forgiving off the hip those types of things it's not such a cookie cutter roll you're able to it's more of a jack of all trades type of weapon but it's certainly leaning towards medium range engagements i particularly as i told you in the scar h review i just like scars so i was kind of was pulling for it a little bit in this kind of showdown but i'll tell you what my stats indicate that i played much much better with the ace 52 now i haven't played as much with the ace 52 as i have with the scar but that will change as i continue to play more more and more time now one thing that should be mentioned obviously we have like seven different variations of the ace in this game i'm only kidding obviously but you know there's ace 23 that everybody uses the ace 21 i believe cqb is ace 52 i personally just sometimes want to get away from that sprite on my screen i just i just i get tired of looking at the same gun so that's when i'll go to the scar or something that it's not really a functional you know indicator either way on each weapon but it is something to be considered and sometimes i just get tired of looking at the same weapon i did in battlefield 3 with the m16 so when i do switch weapons i don't want to just grab another weapon that looks exactly like the other weapon does that make sense so basically this is a very good weapon one i do enjoy one i perform very well with actually i've had some really really big matches with this weapon especially in tdm it's just kind of it's very good it's for tdm because you can get into little spots and just hold people off really well and then you can run into weapons and clean uh, buildings and clean them out as well so it's more well-rounded gun than a scar h uh, but it's more medium to long range suited than your average assault rifle i hope that makes sense to you guys it's been actually quite a challenge to summarize this weapon because like i said it's kind of in a gray area it's a bit of a hybrid but it is a weapon i enjoy and i've seen a lot of people kind of doing reviews saying how much they enjoy it as well so i think this one is gaining some momentum definitely go check it out i think you're going to enjoy it if you play it properly you're going to actually rack up some kills and be pretty beastly with it let me know like always in your comments what you guys think of this weapon how you like to equip it the best how you like to use it as well because I, I know a lot of people like to give me their kits but talk to me a little bit about how you like to use it what kind of tactics you like to use i'm always interested in that as you guys know like always guys thanks so much for the support you've given to this series i've actually really enjoyed doing it this series is actually improve my enjoyment in battlefield 4 because it's pushed me to try different guns almost every couple days here and it's been a lot of fun so like always guys i will talk to you soon take care